Welcome everybody to Inkscape lesson number six, where we are going to be discussing layering and layers, because as you start building more complex objects, you might not necessarily draw them in the order you want them to lay on screen. You're going to have to rearrange things from time to time. And this is going to be a really good lesson to help you get the next basic command of using the Inkscape software. So I'm going to open up my Inkscape software. I'm going to scroll out a little bit. And I'm going to remind you that this is the printable page. Okay, whatever's on this page is what will come out of your printer. But there is a vast amount of space surrounding your page that you can build objects. So don't ever be afraid to build objects off your printable page and then simply move them back onto the printable page when you are ready to output them. So that's what we're going to do today. But I want to show you today that all these objects not only lay on layers within the drawing, but we can create layers to put them on specifically to keep them organized over here in what's known as the Layers dialog box. How do you get to the Layers dialog box? Right up here in the drop-down menu, Layer, Layers. Okay, You hit that button, this dialog box will pop up on screen. You hit the X, the dialog box will go away. Layer, Layers dialog box comes up. And you'll notice that when you open Inkscape and you start drawing, everything is defaulted to layer number one. There's actually a button or an icon where you can turn the visuals on and off. You can actually lock the layer so that nothing can be moved, manipulated, or changed. That's also handy to keep from making mistakes. You can unlock the layer when you're done. And you can even rename the layer. This one's currently named layer one. Okay, I want to rename it really quick, Canadian Flag. So, now I've got a Canadian Flag layer. If I want to build things on separate layers, I can either do that as I build them, or I can do that when I'm finished. Let me show you what I mean. We're currently on the Canadian Flag layer. I'm going to go and I'm going to make a box. Then I'm going to make a circle. And then I'm going to make a star. And you'll remember from previous lessons that the objects lay on screen in the order they were created. Box was created first, so it's lower than everything else. Circle was created second, so it's in between. Star was created third, so it is on the top. And of course, the box, having been created before any of the Canadian flag elements, is above all of those. Well, let me color code these just so you can see things a little bit easier. I'm going to make the box light blue outline with a dark blue fill. So there's my blue box. I'm going to make the circle a lighter yellow outline or stroke with a darker yellow fill. And I'm going to go ahead and make the star a lighter green outline or stroke with a darker green fill. So I've got a blue box a yellow circle and a green star and you see how they are laid on screen in that order well you can change that order by using your layers dialog box over in your layers dialog box there is a create new layer plus sign and a delete current layer minus sign so I'm going to create some new layers click once dialog box comes up and I get to name it I'm going to name one layer blue box and the blue box layer has been added to my layers palette. Make another new layer. I'm going to call it yellow star. And the yellow star layer has been added. Running out of room? No problem. Go to the bottom of this dialog box, wait for the double-headed arrow to come up, click and drag. And I will create a third layer, and I'm going to call it green star. Dang it, I called the other one yellow star, didn't I? Y'all got to correct me when I'm wrong. It's a yellow circle. Sorry. <laughs> I am losing it. Ah, oh, yellow circle. Green star. And now everybody's happy. Why erase that kind of comedy gold, right? If I look silly doing something, hopefully you picked up on it before I picked up on it. And that's good. You should be able to spot mistakes. 
So I've got a green star layer, a yellow circle layer, and a blue box layer, and a Canadian flag layer. Now, everything still resides, however, on the Canadian flag layer. How do I move them? Simple. Select the object, right mouse click, and look for the option move to layer dot dot dot. Up pops a dialog box. Where do I want the green star? On the green star layer. Move. Where do I want the yellow circle to go? Onto the yellow circle layer. Go. And where do I want the blue box? I want the blue box onto the blue box layer. Now you will see that every object has been placed on its own individually named layer. Okay, that's perfection. Because if we were to do anything with multiple objects, let's imagine different cartoon characters, you'd probably want your individual characters on their own layer. If I create a Winnie the Pooh, I'm going to want that on its own Winnie the Pooh layer. If I create a Tigger, I'm going to want that placed on its own Tigger layer. And then if I create a background, like a bedroom, I'm probably going to want that on its own background bedroom layer. So now I've got the ability to move between the objects and continue manipula manipulating them. Let's imagine I want the box to be about that big. And now I want the circle to fill the box, but not touch the outline. So I'm going to manipulate my circle to be the same size as the dark blue inner box, but not touch the outline stroke. And now I'm going to want my star to fit inside the circle. And you know what? I might even rotate it and make it stand straight up and down. And because they're all on separate layers, I can manipulate them individually. But when I like what I've got as a finished product, I can still select all of those, right mouse click, and group them. And even though they are on separate layers, they can still be grouped together. And then they can continue to be manipulated as one solid object. Now, you unfortunately can't manipulate them in your layers palette anymore because when they were grouped, they all ended up going to one layer. So I should be able to delete that layer now and delete this layer now. Go in and rename this layer and I'm going to call it Robinson Flag. Maybe this is going to be the flag of my home. Right, so now I got my Robinson flag on its own layer. I've grouped those objects together. I can manipulate them together. I've got my Canadian flag on its own layer, but after the last time we worked, I apparently did not group it. Now my Canadian flag is grouped. So I can put that on my printable page. I may or may not need my maple leaf. I could put those on their own layer if I want to. Why not? Create new layer. Maple leaf. S maple leaves. Maple leaves, plural. Maple leaves. Only a Toronto maple leaf hockey player could be pluralized in having many maple leafs. I believe these maple leaves need to be pluralized in that method. Right mouse click, move to layer, maple leaves. Select that one, right mouse click, move to layer, maple leaves. Now the maple leaves are on their own layer, able to be locked or visually turned on and off. The Canadian flag is on its own layer, able to be locked. Robinson flag is on its own layer, able to be locked. Once locked, they can't be moved. There's no way I can mess this up. I can go in individually and mess around with any one layer by unlocking it. And I can even, if I want to, go in and ungroup the object if I want to. So a lot of things we can do, a lot of things we can do in order to have control over everything in Inkscape to make it behave in the manner that we want it to behave. Grouping, ungrouping, zooming in, zooming. Oh, I hate when I do that by accident.
I won't tell you what I did because I don't want you doing it. Uh, zoom out. Move that one back to the printable page. Zoom back in. All right. For your assignment, I would like you to please make me a box, a circle, and a star. They're created using the Create Rectangles and Squares tool, Create Circles and Ellipse tools, Create Stars and Polygon tools. And we're going to deal with those in a future lesson. But all you got to do is click on them and drag to create the object. I want you to create one of each. I want you to color it. I want you to go and create your layers dialog box under drop down menu, layer, layers. I want you to create separate layers for the blue box, the, no, the blue box, the yellow circle, and the green star. And I want you to leave them like that. So I am going to very quickly undo everything I did. Edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. Control Z will also edit, undo. So I'm going to hold Control Z and I'm going to go back in time. Control Z, Control Z, before I created the Robinson flag. And there we go. So what do I want you to do? I want you to create a separate layer for each of those objects. There we go. Now I'm all the way back. And I want to be able to mark it by going in and seeing that your green star is on the green star layer, that your yellow circle is on the yellow circle layer, and that your blue box is on the blue box layer. Okay, I want you to create separate layers so that your Canadian flag and maple leaves are on one layer, a blue box, a yellow circle, and a green star are on their own layers so that I know you understand the concept of layers. Okay, don't group them. I don't want them grouped because I want to be able to manipulate them individually and see that they're on their own layers. And that's going to be for marks. So create for me a nicely layered object where the Canadian, a nicely layered project where the Canadian flag and maple leaves are on one layer, the blue box, the yellow circle, and the green star are on separate layers. Put them in this order make them concentric to each other, and then just leave them ungrouped in their separate layers so that I can mark it. Sound good? Do it. Send it to me via Edsby, and I will see you in Lesson 7.